Give me one second. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> Okay, that's okay. You don't need the music. Hold on. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Trisha. And good afternoon to everyone and a belated Happy New Year to everyone. Welcome to the first session of the Philippine Israel Tech and Innovation Series, where we will showcase leading technology from Israel to bring innovation that can bring accelerated growth and more jobs to our agriculture, transportation, and environmental sectors. This series is done in partnership with our friends from the Embassy of Israel in the Philippines. Israel, as many of you know, is a world leader in innovation. The following may need, um, not too long ago, it had more companies in the tech-focused NASDAQ stock exchange, for example, than any other country except the US. It also had more tech, uh, high-tech startups and a larger VC industry than any other, in the, any other country per capita. Um, we can benefit a lot from that. I'm not sure if, those, if that data is very updated, but that was not too long ago, at least. Today's session will focus on agriculture, featuring live tech demos of Israel applications that offer innovative solutions to challenges faced by farmers and agribusinesses. This is important to us because MBC's main mission is policies and practices to create more jobs. And Philippine Agri has the slowest growth and the lowest paying jobs in the country. To kickstart the session, we have Israel Ambassador to the Philippines, His Excellency Ilan Fluss, joining us today. Ambassador Fluss has set deep roots in the Philippines with his first diplomatic post in Manila in 1995, and his second son being a Balikbayan because he was born here in the Philippines. If Ambassador Fluss isn't running advocacy programs and diplomatic affairs across the country, he's running trails and marathons. Uh, as an avid runner, he also loves exploring hiking trails with his family and friends. Today's session uh, on agriculture is right up his, his alley as he led the first Israeli-initiated UN resolution on agriculture technology and development during his post as counselor to the United Nations. With that, I'm very pleased to invite Ambassador Ilan Fluss for brief welcome remarks and an introduction to today's speakers. Ambassador. Thank you very much, Coco, for the introduction and personal introduction. Um, and welcome to everyone who joined us uh, today. Magadang Kapon, Sanyong Lahat. Israel and the Philippines have always had good and friendly relations since the open door policy when President Quezon opened the Philippines for 1,300 Jews, Jewish refugees fleeing from Europe from the Nazis in 1938. The relations were enhanced in 1947 when the Philippines supported the establishment of the Jewish State of Israel. And in return, Israel values the friendship we have with the Philippines. So not only going back to 95, but during Typhoon Yolanda 2013, Israel was one of the first countries to reach out to the Philippines and send over a 148 member of IDF mission to do search and rescue relief operations and set up a field hospital that treated over 2,800 uh, victims. After Typhoon Odette, we also sent some assistance myself to Cebu, to Bohol, and to Shiragao. And I'm proud to say that our bilateral relations have gone a long way from cultural to development to defense, commercial, and economic field. By the way, there is no requirement for visa to visit Israel. And this is, again, due to the historical relations. Although I believe the countries are not yet fully utilizing the opportunities, I'm pleased to say that many are recognizing what we have to offer to each other. The Philippines is a beautiful island country full of natural resources with a population of 110 million English-speaking, talented people. Israel is a country of only 9.5 million people that offers technology and innovation. And as you said, Coco, 9, 000, more than 9,000 startups uh, in Israel. So both countries are facing challenges. Together, we can, tr can translate those challenges to opportunities. And how? Through inter entrepreneurship, innovation, technologies, science, and better practices. During the height of the pandemic, the embassy expanded and opened two new offices here, our defense and our economic mission. 
The head of the economic mission, Mr. Tomer Havy, is here with us today together with his team. They are working hard to promote business opportunities between our two countries and our private sectors, working with private sector for trade delegations, introductions, and market research. Israel became known as the land of innovation through our challenges from a desert country with limited access to water and other natural resources. We turned Israel to a strong nation in agriculture and water management. Today, these technologies and these innovations are shared globally and are helping many other countries, including here in the Philippines. The seminar now is the first of three sessions with the Makati Business Club, where Israeli companies and startups are going to present the technologies that are revolutionizing the global market. In a few minutes, you'll be introduced to Netafim and Tomorrow IO, two companies who are involved in modernizing the agricultural sector. Netafim is known worldwide for the irrigation technologies and for developing smart agriculture, including a drip irrigation for rice. Tomorrow IO is recognized on how they address challenges brought by the weather and, climatic ch and climate change through the collection of data and using AI to analyze it and make smart decisions in the agri-sector and other applications like disaster preparedness. My goal as ambassador of Israel to the Philippines is to create bridges of innovation and technology between our two countries. Through this webinar, we want to introduce you to some of these Israel's innovation and technologies. And I promise you there are many more. As I discussed with President Marcos, and as he asked me, we have to work together in addressing the needs of the Philippines for commercial, productive, smart, and resilient agriculture that can ensure the growing needs of the population for food security and job opportunities. This is why we are starting today with the agricultural sector. I want again to thank yourself, Coco, and the Makati Business Club for being our partner to showcase these technologies today. And we hope to see you in the remaining two sessions, plus the next online B2B event in the coming weeks. I hope this new partnership will lead to more interesting initiatives that will benefit the business communities of both countries. I invite you all to approach myself or Mr. Havy and our teams. Israel has a lot to offer to the Philippines, and we are here to help in introductions, opening doors, and facilitating the business community in creating these new partnerships. So, maramik salamat po, todaraba, and shalom. All right, thank you so much, Ambassador. With that, uh, we'd like to turn over the program to our first speaker. Um, that would be Roy, uh, that would be, sorry, that would be Omer uh, Selatunis from um, tomorrow.io for his presentation. Thank you very much. Can I show the screen? Yes, go ahead, Omer. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much, uh, NBC team. And good afternoon for you all. My name is Omer Salatunis, presenting Tomorrow.io, the world's weather intelligence company. Um, and I will just kick it off with talking a little bit on the, on the challenge, um, which we don't need to say a lot. Um, climate change is here, and we see more volatile and more extreme weather events that climate change is causing. And I think that you know better than myself that the Philippines is one of the most sensitive countries to weather. And in the past 10 years, I found this resource and I hope that it represents uh, the truth uh, that the Philippines has been experienced a lot of uh, damages and annual losses from typhoons, typhoons and extreme weather events during the last uh, 10 years that caused extreme uh, damage in terms of uh, economic damage. Um, and this is not only for the Philippines, it's actually globally. And again, weather become more extreme or vo more volatile. And we are, as a company, are trying to address it and help companies, organizations, governments, and people to better address these challenges. Tomorrow, I owe at a glance, we are eventually a software company. We have a few hundreds of customers globally, 
um, with more 60,000 people using our data and API, with more than 4 million users using, using our weather application. We have some strategic investors from multiple domains, such as automotive, such as Ford, um, energy, such as SoftBank Energy, aviation, which is JetBlue, National Grid, and Evergy, which are energy businesses. And we serve customers for many domains, not only in agriculture, but both in aviation, in technology like Uber on demand, energy companies, even sports companies, governments, and defense organizations. And we are really focusing on solving weather uh, challenges um, through a very sophisticated business model and, and technical approach. I, I want <clears throat> I, I will have to say that this is one of the most uh, big challenges for us as a humanity that we are tackling here. How we do it? To simplify everything, I think, I will just describe three pillars of the business of tomorrow I owe. The first one is observations. In order to know whether and to understand whether we need to observe it. Um, we're building currently a constellation of satellites that are going to cover the world um, with active weather sensors. I will elaborate it a little, bo a little bit more in a few minutes. These observations are being assimilated into a weather prediction models, which are local and global. And these models are being digested into our platform that are bringing insights, actionable insights to people. And that means that we have really huge flexibility in terms of controlling the technology with, with, uh, behind this weather business in terms of we can control each part of the segment and adjust it according to our customers' needs and partners. A few seconds on the satellites initiative, which is a huge one. We can see here uh, an image that describes the uh, distribution of active weather sensors globally. We can see there is a huge inequality in terms of observation between the Western world and, um, and uh, Africa, Asia, <clears throat> Latin America. Um, and although the Philippines currently have a good weather observation network, there is a huge gap in oceans where all the weather begins at. So for example, typhoons are begin on the Pacific Ocean and we can um, increase the accuracy of those predictions with our uh, constellation of satellites from space. And this is, how, this is one of the key objectives of this initiative today. We're going to deploy it in the next, starting the next this year. It's going to be a real-time data that is going to be utilized from, through our partners and actually through our platform as well. So, everyone could access this data. Um, this is an image, um, a picture of our first satellite that is going to be launched in the next few months. And eventually we're going to cover the whole Earth, including oceans and remote areas of the world. Um, we'll go back for a second to our platform, which is eventually the platform that everyone uses, which allows uh, people to basically see the data, right? Visualization, map ties, numerical data. Um, we are translating and allow our users to translate those insights to predictive, actionable uh, actions and allow easy collaborations and scale. I will show in a brief our uh, platform and you're welcome to contact after this uh, webinar to see more. So, this is our platform, and what you can see here is basically a map that we can visualize all the data. Everything is very, very granular, and you can see how granular the data uh, uh, when I'm zooming in. You can see where we can see the difference between mountains and valleys. Um, we can see precipitation, and we can see um, lightnings in real time. And by the way, this is a very severe. Uh, um, weather phenomenon that cause a lot of disruptions to uh, people also in agriculture, but also in other industries. Um, we can place locations. I placed few here in the Philippines. You can see, um, you can distribute and create like virtual locations. And the next thing you can do, you can actually monitor those. 
So we created a few monitors here for irrigation where we can set the thresholds for rain or for temperature. It can be very um, sophisticated um, insights or very simple ones, but actually you can translate those weather phenomena or weather data into an actionable alerts here, where to irrigate or where to spray or, where, or when to um, basically keep your staff at home or when to go out. The next thing you can do is actually collaborate through, um, through um, uh, this platform and, and basically share those insights through mobile uh, application, through SMS, through emails. And this allows easy scale of uh, monitoring locations across the country or across your field. So at the end, easy to use platform that shows the data, historical data, real-time data, and focus data, predictive insights, and ability to share uh, these insights with your uh, company. I want to talk briefly on use cases where you can use this data for operational excellence in agriculture, but also in other industries, and as well as reducing your climate risk, because when you're do doing it on scale, you're more climate secure by default. So. Netafimir is one of our, our customers in the market, um, a very good partner and customer. Um, you can use this data for crop spraying, for planting, for smart irrigation, for heat and cold stress prevention, of course, in the Philippines, more heat stress. You can train, use this data, uh, historical data to train more sophisticated models and collaborating. We are also creating more ad hoc uh, fields or parameters for the agricultural sector, such as historical reference data, ETO, GDD, which is growing degree days, decision trees for uh, crop varieties, growth stage models, and etc. As well as creating solutions which are more tailored for people or for users in the agri sector. Last thing I want to mention is a huge project that we have with the Kenyan Agriculture Ministry together with the Bill and Melinda Gates, where we are collaborating with many partners. And I think uh, this could be a, a good model also in the Philippines, where we need a lot of partners in it that can utilize our data and our solution and collaborate and distribute this data and insights to uh, the user themselves. I do want to mention that we are working in many industries and we have many use cases on the on-demand sector, on the energy sector, on the aviation sector, logistics sector, which I cannot elaborate in this session, but you are more than welcome to contact us. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, All right. yeah. Thank you so much, Omer, for that insightful presentation. I like that you use the locations of our audience members actually in your demo. So I hope that was helpful for some of you joining us in the room. Um, so with that, we'd like to have a quick break now um, with the audience for any initial questions that you might have um, or any comments. Um, if there are none, we will proceed to the next presentation. Any questions? Okay, I think they're still um, formalizing their questions for later for the open discussion, which is okay. We'll have a more oh. fruitful exchange there. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Omer. Um, on that note, I'd like to invite our next speaker, um, Netafim's Roy Yonai, um, to present his brief tech demo and presentation. Thank you so much, Roy, for joining us. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been told before that I have some echo. I hope now it's better. Better, okay, great. So I will use these earphones. Okay, so just let me share my screen. And we can start. Of course, I forgot to share with the sound. Just a minute, sorry. Almost there. Okay. 
Okay, now it should be good. Okay, good afternoon uh, to all our friends in Philippines. Good morning to the people in Israel. My name is Roy, Roy Yonai. I'm the managing director of Netafim Southeast Asia. I'm living uh, in Bangkok, so I'm very close to you. I just been in Philippines a few weeks ago and I'm coming very often there. Um, so I will tell you today about Netafim, about precision agriculture, precision irrigation. I guess Netafim is not new for a big part of this audience, but maybe a few of the things that I will tell you today are, are new and maybe interesting for you. I see we have many people uh, from the private section and uh, governmental section, so that's great. And I hope each of you can find something that will be relevant for him. I've been told uh, a while ago that if I want to have a great presentation, I should start with a joke or with a video. Uh, and since I'm not a great joke teller, I will start with a video. So I will present a short video and then I will continue. We don't eat or drink like that, but in most of the world, we still irrigate like that. I mean, there must be a better way. And actually, there is. It's called precision irrigation. Pre what irrigation? Precision irrigation. Here, let me show you how it works. Precision irrigation is a unique approach to irrigating crops. It delivers water and nutrients directly to the plant's root zone, giving the plant exactly what it needs when it needs it. This creates optimal growing conditions without any waste. Okay, so that's great news about the plants. And what about the farmers? Farmers get higher yields every season while saving huge amounts of water, fertilizers, and energy, no matter the soil type, water quality, or climate. And it can be done on any field size, shape, or topography. We're talking about way more profitable farming here. Nice, so the farmers are happy and make more money. But what about our planet? That's the best part. Precision irrigation allows farmers around the world to grow the food we need without using up our precious resources. It helps us keep our soil, water, and air clean and secure our planet for future generations. So are you one of those new startups we keep hearing about lately? Well, not exactly. Netafim is a global ag tech leader that pioneered drip irrigation in 1965 and today is the world's largest irrigation company. At Netafim, we're continuously developing new irrigation and crop growing technologies, providing customers with complete end-to-end -end agricultural projects, services, and turnkey greenhouse solutions, all supported by our team of professionals. We help farmers, corporates, governments, and NGOs in achieving their agricultural aspirations. Precision irrigation allows climate resilience that brings stability to the farming ecosystem. Ensuring a food secure future and empowering sustainable agriculture, or as we like to say, we help the world grow more with less. Coffee. So, thank you. Okay, so this was kind of humoristic way to, to say what is Netafim all about, but let's go back and start from the beginning. Like any great thing in the world, Netafim was invaded out of necessity. The picture you see here is from Kibbutz Hatzarim in the desert of Israel back in 1950. This bunch of great people were sent there and someone told them, you need to do here agriculture, you need to live here. But as, you, as we all know, it's almost impossible to do agriculture without water. And these great minds and great people uh, sit together and they invaded the drip irrigation. Uh, this were, were, was their way to do agriculture in the desert. This was the history. And today, 70 years after, Netafim is the precision agriculture leader worldwide and we are by far the biggest, largest irrigation company. Few figures about Netafim. So as I told you, we are the number one irrigation company. 
our headquarters is in Israel, in Tel Aviv, but we have also a few manufacturing plants in Israel. We are operating in more than 100 countries uh, all over the globe. You see in the right upper corner, we have more than 150 agronomists. This is the core of the business for us. We're dealing with agriculture, we're dealing with crops, and we need to have expertise. And expertise in this field is coming from agronomy. And this is why we have such a big team of agronomists. We have 19 manufacturing uh, plants all over the world relevant to this region. Uh, we have factory in China, factory in Australia, factory in India. And not less important, we have three recycling plants and we are just building the third one. Uh, this is becoming more and more important for us as a company to make sure zero garbage in the fields. So as you saw in the video, the logo of the company is Grow More With Less, and this is what we're doing on a, on a daily basis. We're living in the age of less. We have lo less water, not necessarily in Southeast Asia, but globally we should have less water. We have less arable land. Uh, this is getting crucial. People are building, we are building bigger cities and we have less land to do agriculture. And maybe the most important and relevant to our region, we have less stability. We all know that in the last three, three years we had here La Nina with a lot of rains, uh, floods and, and so on. But there is a high chance that in the coming three years or four or five or six years, we're gonna have a drought. So the stability is critical and we need, and, and we need more. So what is the more? The more is clear. By 2050, we're gonna be 10 billion people on this earth, on this planet, and we need to feed all these people. And the only way to feed people currently is doing agriculture. But now I'm going to say something that is not very popular. The way that we grow the majority of the food today is part of the problem. It's not part of the solution. We are not efficient in the way that we are doing agriculture. We are not efficient in the way we are using water. We are not efficient in the way that we are using the land. And we are not efficient in the way that we are using, we are using chemicals and, and fertilizers and so. It, this, is must, this must be changed. And it's on us, it's on the farmers, it's on the companies, it's on the governments. How we can do it? We need to take more control and we need to gain stability. This can be done only by, by one thing, one way, and this way is precision agriculture. Precision agriculture is not what Nerafim is doing for the last 70 years, uh, and it's becoming more and more relevant uh, for us and for the world. So. Precision agriculture is a very trendy and a very sexy word, uh, but and uh, there are many meanings for precision agriculture. I will tell you what is precision agriculture by Netafim. So we have a few pillars and I can speak hours on any of them, but I will just touch them very quick. So the first pillar for in precision agriculture for Netafim is of course, precision irrigation and fertigation. This is what we're doing uh, for living. This is the core of the business. We are developing and inventing solutions for precision irrigation. We have more than 500 patents on irrigation. This is what we are doing every day. Then we're moving into agro knowledge. I told you before, we're dealing with crops. We're dealing with agriculture. And this is uh, why we have such a huge teams of uh, agronomists all over, because in the end of the day, everything starts and ends in the plant. So if you understand the plant, you can do whatever you want. End-to-end -end agricultural projects and services. Here it's a game of size. We are the largest irrigation company. When it comes to big projects, you need to have people, you need to have tools, you need to have the knowledge. And this is what we are doing. We are doing agricultural projects all over the world. Greenhouse projects, uh, this is very important, mainly in our region, and I will touch it in a few different slides uh, uh, in a minute. Digital tools uh, and solutions, we just, we just saw a great presentation by tomorrow. Uh, this is part of the tools that we're doing. We all understand that the world is going digital and we need to be there. Netafim spends millions or tens of millions of dollars in developing the most advanced digital solutions. 
to support farmers. And this is the important word, to support. It will never replace the people. We need to support the farmers, support in taking decisions and supporting in operating the systems. This is what we're doing. Community agriculture, uh, when, when we're dealing, we know, we all know that the majority of agriculture, mainly in our region, is done by, uh, by smallholders. These people uh, not always have the abilities, the capabilities, the money uh, to purchase advanced systems. And this is why Nerafim is moving to a model of community agriculture. One of the biggest prizes of Nerafim is huge community projects in India and in Africa. And hopefully we can bring this also to our region, to Southeast Asia and to Philippines uh, specifically. So let me say a few words about greenhouses. You know, people tend to think that in our region it's hot enough and we don't need greenhouse. This is just par partially right. But greenhouse is not only uh, for heating. Uh, we all know that the middle class population in Southeast Asia is growing very fast. People want to eat high quality, high level vegetables. And when you, ha when you have so much rain, the only way to grow high value vegetables or high quality vegetables is in greenhouses. So our Nerafim is doing uh, greenhouses for many, many years. We had a greenhouse company for the last 30 years, uh, but it became uh, in a, it, it become more and more relevant in our focus. We're doing end-to-end -end greenhouse projects uh, we have the full package from a uh, structure to, uh, um, uh, to the state of the art system inside the greenhouse. And of course, installation and maintenance and support uh, and also financing solutions. Here you can see in a brief, the different, uh, different structures that we have. Of course, the most relevant for our region is, is polyhouse greenhouses. Uh, we have a special unique model for Southeast Asia with great ventilation capability. Uh, we all know that humidity and heat are the enemy of any crops and, and our uh, special structure uh, designed for a great ventilation and, and it's bringing great results all over the region. Here we can see some of the components uh, that we have inside the greenhouse, uh, but I will not spend your time on that. We can discuss it later. So we have, all the systems, we have all the knowledge, but the most important thing, if being honest, is people. And we need to have boots on ground and Netafim is operating in Southeast Asia and in Philippines for the last 30 years. We have great in-house capabilities all over. We have our headquarters here in Bangkok with all the teams, with design, with uh, manufacturing, with finance, with anything that need uh, for agricultural projects. You can see here some of the crops, uh, the main crops that we're dealing in with in Southeast Asia. Uh, so of course, rice as the ambassador uh, mentioned before, and this is a great story. Corn, sugarcane, potato, vegetables, these are all open field crops. Speaking about orchards, so banana, which is a great and important crop in, in Philippines, and we are very into this crop. Durian, avocado, cocoa, coffee, uh, all these crops uh, we're dealing on a daily basis. Speaking about greenhouses, so of course, vegetables. Actually, in this, in this uh, picture, it's melons, but of course, it can be uh, chilies or tomatoes or, or cucumbers. Uh, leafies, nurseries, flowers, and medical cannabis, which is not relevant to Philippines yet, but uh, it's a big thing in Thailand these days. So we have boots on the ground, and more important, we have boots on the ground in Philippines. And this is uh, the time uh, to mention our great partners in Philippines, Netafields, which is our exclusive dealer for decades. Uh, you can see here in the map uh, that they are all over Philippines, great people, great teams, agronomists, design, technical teams, uh, and they are on ground to do anything that is needed. Um, this is a few pictures from Netafield's greenhouse farming technology demo farm in Davao. You are all more than welcome uh, to visit and, and we can arrange it easily. Um, I think that's all because time is running out. 
Um, so thank you very much. And I'm ready to take any questions that you might have. All right, thank you so much, Roy, for that presentation. It's really, I think the right word is inspiring to see that Israel started their you know, thriving agriculture by turning, far, by turning deserts into farmland. So hopefully we could replicate that here in the Philippines as well. Um, we will be proceeding to the open discussion very soon so we can take questions together with Omer and Roy. Um, but today we are also joined by MBC member and Corporate Affairs Director of Cargill Philippines, Chris Ilagan. As many, of, as many of you may know, um, Cargill is the largest privately held company in the US um, and is a world leader in agricultural commodities. It has a strong presence in the Philippine countryside, supplying animal feeds, um, trading copper, and producing coconut oil. It also has a chicken processing JV with Jollibee Foods. And fun fact, the Philippine business is actually Cargill's first office in Asia, which started back in 1947. Chris is a senior member of the government relations profession, having held the same post in a handful of other large companies in the Philippines. He's a very active member of the American Chamber of Commerce, and we are also happy to say that he's also an active member of MBC. So <laughs> he's playing a very important role in the large range of our initiatives. So Chris, thank you so much for joining us today and for agreeing to be our discussion lead. I'll turn over to you. Thanks a lot, Trisha. What a generous introduction there. But um, Omer, Roy, thank you so much for, for those great presentations. I'm sure it tickled the fancy of many of our participants. Uh, in that regard, I would love to um, just invite our audience. If you have questions, I see a few have come in already and thank you for those. Uh, but feel free to put them in the chat box. And uh, if, if you have the guts, uh, we'd love to have you raise your hand and be willing to actually ask these questions live. Uh, and of course, between Omer and Roy, uh, I did learn that you're actually working together already. But you know, th this is a conversation. So feel free if uh, you agree with the point, or even better, if you disagree with the point with between yourselves, let's 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 just have this fun discussion. Uh, first and foremost, you know, I, I I I'll get to the questions in the chat box shortly. But um, you know, I. I guess let's let's start first with Omer, right? Um, these solutions, I, I, it's actually related to a question. It's more of the business model. Uh, you know, is this a free service? I, I did notice in one of your slides that the business model is more of a software as a service, right? Um, you might want to discuss that a bit, but even going a bit further upstream, the big question is, you know, what what sort of infrastructure do we need in place? to be able to maximize uh, and utilize a software such as yours, knowing fully well that the Philippines is still quite behind insofar as its digital technologies are concerned. And, and perhaps uh, not just from the Israel example, but from the other markets you serve, you know, how do we go about uh, what needs to be fixed in order for us to maximize uh, your, your, your software? First of all, it's a great and tough question. Uh, so I think that in the Philippines, um, eventually we want, there, there is a, a free app, but the free app is too general. It won't create the change that we want to see in, uh, as we see in other industries and uh, geographies that we're operating in. We found that when we serve our customers in a really high touch, um service this is where we see um adoption um and it includes a feedback loop right um and i think that if we're talking on the agriculture sector where well, it's very very uh distributed and use use uh with with many many people we need partners from government um from the agricultural ministry to Pagasa, which we're working on, uh, working with as well, um, to the, those advisors that are, uh, have boots on the ground, because we are a small company, right? We are just 200 people. So we need these partnerships that will allow us to get to the people and also build the right tools for the Philippines um, people 
this is maybe the end user part. On the infrastructure part, we need two things. We need to initiate a local weather model, a higher resolution weather model that will increase the accuracy. And we'll need the infrastructure from Pagasa, which is very easy to implement and get. And in the near future, we'll have this satellites that will be inherently uh, assimilated into the, uh, this platform and tool. So eventually infrastructure data and end user, it's maybe all the advisors that are in the middle that will help us to distribute. Well, thank you, Omer. I, I, I got from you. Um, so the soft infrastructure you actually need are the stakeholders coming together. The hard infrastructure in the form of Pagasa, Pagasa infrastructure, the uh, local weather models, those are easy enough to do. I just my I guess just in relation to it, um, like internet connectivity. I mean, is it necessary or is there an offline version that you know that will at least you know keep the alerts going even if you don't have that interconnect uh, in, in interconnectivity, for example? So because the, the models runs every several minutes, so yes, we'll need uh, internet connectivity, but. In terms of alerting capabilities, we'll just have um, a telco connectivity. Doesn't necessarily an internet connectivity. Perfect. No, thank you, Omer. And that now leads me to Roy, because uh, as I learned that you're working with Netafim, and I, I would like to know probably how so, right? And uh, to what extent it actually links to the precision agriculture solutions uh, that you offer. Yeah. So. Netafim, as I said before, uh, Netafim is investing uh, in the last few years uh, to develop a comprehensive precision irrigation uh, controller. Uh, this controller is an open source controller uh, and it has few functionalities. So first, of course, is to collect the data from any source. It can be from sensors in the field, it can be from satellites, it can be from companies like Tomorrow, so we are collecting the data. Then uh, on the backstage, we are processing the data and we're giving the farmers irrigation and fertigation recommendations. Uh, so this is what we are doing, you know, in, in just one sentence. Uh, so, so again, this is an, a very complicated system. It's based on a lot of knowledge, a 70 years experience and knowledge that uh, we learned uh, uh, through our hands and legs in the field. Uh, and this is how we are cooperating with tomorrow and, and companies like tomorrow to collect all the relevant data for a very specific field and giving a very specific and accurate recommendations for the end user. That, that, that's great. That kind of leads me to the next question I have for you. I mean, one thing that seems to be coming out of both of you right now is this whole idea of an ecosystem of partnerships, of stakeholders. And one thing that I saw on your slide, it was very brief, but uh, it was this idea of a um, community agriculture, right? And I was wondering whether, you know, it sounded interesting. I'm not sure if I understood it right, but um, number one, what is it all about? Number two, um, how do you see that playing out in a country like the Philippines, uh, composed largely of smallholder farmers? Yeah, so a great question, thanks. Uh, of course, community irrigation is is actually uh, meant for for places like Philippines when we have uh, many smallholders. Okay, it's not it's not designed for for the states when you have uh, farmers with uh, thousands of hectares hectares or acres. Uh, so the the idea behind community irrigation is to maximize and to utilize to, to best utilize uh, what farmers have uh, and, and working together. So we're taking a group of farmers. And as I said before, in India, we're doing that with thousands of uh, farmers. Actually, the biggest uh, community irrigation project uh, was done by another firm in India. Uh, it was 10,000 and something hectares with uh, more than 20,000 uh, farmers. We're taking all these people together. We're building one centralized irrigation system and we are working together. Now, of course, in, in this uh, size of project, it can't be done alone. Netafim cannot do it uh, by, by itself. We need to cooperate with other big companies and we need the help and the support of governments. 
and 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 here we are coming you know to the to the challenging part now the government of philippines is great and is investing a lot in agriculture uh, but this this we need to have this change of mind and and to understand that we should work together and to have groups of farmers and not trying to find the solutions for each farmer uh, separately and once we'll have this change of mind uh, it will be it will be great and it will be everybody will benefit from it that's right and i guess just <clears throat> before i get into the a lot of questions now coming in, in the chat box um <clears throat> what sort of scale does precision agriculture start making sense in terms of, I mean, that probably depends on the crops and what have you, but I mean, is there sort of like rule of thumb uh, as to how much needs to come together to create that scale? Yeah, so, so the, there are many layers uh, for precision agriculture, uh, but the basic precision agriculture uh, can be done with one acre. Uh, so having a drip irrigation system for one acre is great. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, of course, when you're scaling up, so also the system uh, will be scaled up and we're not going to, to put a huge controller for one acre. Uh, but we, have, we do have solutions uh, for the very basic farmers, again, starting from one acre or even less and upscaling to a uh, huge projects. But we have the full line and range of, of uh, solutions for, for all sizes. Awesome. No, well, thank you so much, Roy. Now I'm going to get into the chat box. Um, so we answered the question already on whether um, tomorrow IO is a free service. There is a free version, but it's not going to get you what you need, right? Um, having said that, uh, well, here's the here's the. Did you want to add to that before we move on, uh, Omer? No, I mean it's only whether we want to get into the bottom of the insights where we need more data, like. Uh, like the studies right uh for each crop for the insights for each crop uh it's there we need more uh, sophisticated solutions correct and i guess that kind of relates to the next question in the chat box which was does your tech allow us to determine if we should plant say rice now or defer planting to two weeks from now or even to plant another crop so it's a good question we we are focusing on whether whether is what happened in the history, right? 20 years ago, up to what's happening now, towards the next 14 days. From 14 days and on, it's climate. We have capabilities in climate forecasting, but, but it's less our focus. We're really focusing on actionable insights. Anything will be more than 14 days, it's still not actionable enough, right? So we are looking on the short-term predictions, which is, now to the next 14 days if anything falls with this timeline we can do yeah but it's a i mean farming it's an operational thing so that's that short-term outlook is uh allows you to to prep at least the next few days right and so far as yeah. what you should be doing given the weather yeah climate. i'm saying the data after 14 days is a little is is still not there the predictions we have a lot to, to evolve also there. We're more focused as a company on the next few days. Go ahead, Roy. You were going to say something. Yeah, no, I, I just, I like this question. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm familiar with two Israeli startup companies that are trying to develop this kind of model that will help farmers to take the decision what to do, what to grow, and when to grow. It's not easy. It's it's very complicated, but great question. And for sure, it will be, it's it's part of the future. It's part of the future with AI, but there's a lot of liability if you give the wrong advice too. <laughs> not sure if anyone's ready for that. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, I thank you, Leon, Leonilo de la Cruz, for raising your hand. Um, may I ask the Secretariat if we can um, unmute uh, Leonilo to ask his question live? I think you were unmuted already. If you can just unmute again. Uh, yes. There you go. Go ahead. Thank you very much uh, to Makati Business Club for inviting our cooperative and yours truly. Uh, it's very helpful. You know? uh, thank you to Ambassador of Israel and Omar, Rohi, and to you, Chris. You know? uh, it's very timely because uh, tomorrow we'll be having 
our uh, grant from the Department of Agrarian Reform regarding this uh, greenhouse uh, technology. And uh, for all you know, I'm very much enthusiastic with the Israel technology and I'm very, I'm very, very uh, much uh, uh, eager to, to learn your technology, especially in the YouTube, uh, your, your YouTube channel of different uh, uh, blogs, you know. Uh, may I know uh, how it costs for one hectare or one hectare? And it's possible, uh, we will please study the Bakati Business Club uh, will uh, set a farm visit with the BAO uh, model or mo your farm in the BAO. Uh, I'm a, I am a, a regional representative of uh, poultry, livestock, and corn, and I'm very much willing to adopt your uh, technology and suggest it to the Department of Agriculture in Region 3 to have a model or one of our uh, farm farmers or, or rice uh, corn farmers in Lebanon and in the region three. Wonderful. I will collaborate Great question. for the region Great questions, three. Leonilo, and uh, I would love to pass it over to uh, our speakers. Roy, maybe you want to kick it off? Yeah, so I, I'm just not sure if the question was the, about the cost in on open field or greenhouse. What was the question? Open field. Oh, op, open field. Okay, so you know, when always when uh, facing the question of uh, of price, so people are starting uh, to smile. Uh, there is no one answer to that uh, because it depends uh, on many many parameters uh, and aspects. Uh, they are generally saying there are a few parameters that will have a huge effect on the price. Uh, first is the water source. Uh, yes. If you have deep well or if you have a canal or if you have a reservoir or if you need to dig a reservoir if you need to lead uh, to take the water uh, one kilometer or 20 kilometers uh, so this can change the full uh, economic of, of, the, um, of the, the solution but i will try to give you uh, some number because uh, you need to, to go with something so let's let's separate uh, the the infield and the other parts okay the infield is the irrigation inside the field uh, the price, roughly saying, as a rule term, the price of uh, infield drip irrigation will be around one thousand five hundred dollars mm -hmm. per, per hectare. Uh, but again, this okay. number is is not very important because it can be doubled or tripled. Uh, depends on on many many other aspects that I cannot answer now. I need to see a real field and, and to give a, a smart answer. And uh, the follow-up there is uh, MBC. Uh, would you like to help organize a Davao trip to the demo farm? <laughs> I, pref I prefer that question to what I thought was the other question, which is to, to give a grant. So okay. organizing the trip sounds easier than the giving of the grant. <laughs> we'll, see what, we'll see what we can Thank do. You. <laughs> That's something to take offline, but for sure, I we I, I believe we have many here that may potentially be able to to fund a grant. So uh, do hear it out, and uh, if you're willing to, let's talk to Coco afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Leonilo, uh, and great to see also the co-ops uh, just being uh, represented here. Uh, it just comes thank to you the interest, right, and the food for the future, right. Um, yeah. So next question here is by uh, by Ari, right? Roy, I think it was mentioned that you also do drip irrigation for rice, a C3 crop. Is your drip irrigation technology mainly for upland rice or fancy varieties, or is it also used for regular rice? Yeah, so, you know, it's not my mistake that I didn't, uh, didn't mention drip irrigation for rice because I knew it's going to be a huge topic. And once the ambassador say drip irrigation for rice, I said, Okay, we'll have to speak about it. Look, drip irrigation for rice is a huge topic for Netafim. We're investing more than 15 years uh, in R&D uh, to develop protocols for drip irrigation in rice. This topic is very close to my heart because I was leading the rice initiative in Netafim for a few years uh, before coming here to Asia. Uh, so yes, drip irrigation, let me be very honest, very clear, is the best <laughs> irrigation for rice. Yes. It's not easy to implement and it needs to be specific. And we're working, we have a few demo plots now in Philippines these days. Uh, to answer the question, 
Drip irrigation brings many benefits uh, to uh, upland rice and to lowland rice. It mainly depends on the economic, okay? So if you guys have a lot of water and no issue with water and you don't want to do rotation and, and so on, so for low, lowland, it's maybe not the great solution. Uh, in, in highland uh, rice, automatically you can add another cycle uh, because you are using now irrigation and then you can double the income uh, the trials that we are doing now in Philippines are mainly on uh, upland rice, on uh, rain-fed rice, uh, but in other places it's also going for lowland. So the, the answer is, is complicated and long, but uh, if, I, if I'm trying to do it short, let's focus in Philippines on the lowland, on the highland, sorry. Perfect. No, thank you, Roy. Um, next one, Omer, um, maybe you can um, answer this. I know you've kind of touched on it already. There's a question here. Can a small scale farmer access your products and AI weather? Um, I guess it, it goes back also to the question of just, you know, this small scale, right? And, 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 and maybe based on what you've seen in other markets or other countries, have you seen small scale farmers um, using your, your service and how has it helped them um, and, and, and what have you? The best example is that I have is through a public-private uh, collaboration that we have with the Ministry of Agriculture of, of, uh, of Kenya, uh, where the Kenyan Agriculture Ministry provides services to local farmers through the advisor or the extended um, advisors uh, on ground that are helping in distributing this data, again, through mobile apps, but we need some basic training around that and uh, translation. Uh, this is the best. This is the best case or the best method that we see increase of productivity. And by the way, we are getting to one million farmers today. We are going to increase it quite largely in the next few years. Um, you can always use our weather weather app on mobile. But again, we want to be more concise and more precise with what we are serving for, for farmers. It's concise, precise, and it's insightful because, uh, you know, the, the, that alert thing is actually a very useful, uh, uh, a useful um, feature that, that, that I, I see. And I think, you know, many don't always have the capability to fully process what the weather necessarily means for their crop. And those alerts kind of put you on, on, on top of, you know, taking action as needed, right? Given that insight that your app, uh, that your software provides. So I, I think that's it's very helpful. Maybe just on this PPP model, I'm, I'm a little bit interested. So was it the Ministry of Agriculture that subscribed to the software and then made it available to the farmers? I mean, what, what, how did it work? Yeah, it's through their app, through Claro app. Uh, where we are providing all the technology behind, which is the data and also the crop insights with another partner, with an agronomist uh, company. Um, so we have the crop knowledge and we have the app and we have the farmers that are, that, that are familiar and have a trust relationship with, with, their, uh, with this ministry, let's say, or with the service already. And we're just enhancing that, right? Um, we need a trusted partner for sure yeah. to get to the end user that will trust the alert that is being provided. Um, and also setting the alert, sometimes we need also some expertise there um, for each person, for each crop, for each location. Sometimes location is is something that I thought it, it, it's something that has been solved, but not not all of the people that are managing those uh, uh, systems knows where the crops uh, geographically. Uh, so even that, even this, which is sounds like a very simple um, challenge, but in scale, it is a huge challenge to understand what are the locations of the crops. Great. No, thank you so much. Now, you know, I guess something that's kind of burning in my mind, and I'm not sure there's a question related to it, you know, a lot of these technologies that both of you offer are, are very new, right? And uh, it upskilling the need for extension to help us understand how to use these tools, train the farmers. 
how do you go about doing that in your with in 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 relation to your respective technologies that you're offering? Because I, I would imagine it's not an overnight uh, matter. It, it may be complicated for one that is hearing about these technologies for the first time. So maybe Roy, on on precision ag, maybe you can share a little bit about that. Yeah. So this is again <laughs> a very very good question. Yes, it's not overnight. Uh, if looking on the facts, Nerofim exists for the last for the last 70 years and the precision of the percentage of precision agriculture is tiny, uh, something uh, with one digit. Uh, so it takes time. Um, Nerafim puts a lot of efforts uh, in teaching and educating. Uh, and this is why I said before, the most technology is important, but the world is driven by two things, technology and people. And you cannot do nothing without technology, but you can also cannot do nothing without people. And this is why for us as a company, it's very important to have people on ground. And this is why we have our people here in Southeast Asia, our people in Philippines, our great partners in Philippines. Uh, and we're doing training and we're educating the market. Uh, some Sometime around uh, June this year, uh, we're going to, to do a very big uh, training uh, in, in Philippines. We're going to bring experts from Israel uh, about irrigation, about technology. So yes, it's, it's a hard work. If it was easy, you know, everybody would do it. Uh, I saw that someone here sent a question about uh, cheap uh, Chinese competitors. Yes, in the end of the day, uh, technology, everybody can produce. The, the important thing is to produce the knowledge and to deliver this knowledge to the people. And, and this is what make us Nerafim market leader. Uh, so yes, we're, we're putting a lot of effort uh, to that. Perfect, thank you, Roy. Uh, Omer? I'm not sure that uh, uh, I got the question, so I'm sorry. It was, uh... No, it's just more on this uh, having to educate, um, teach, uh, those that use your app, especially if it's the first time they're being introduced to such a technology, uh, okay. how how have your how has tomorrow IO kind of overcome that? So, so we are a, a software as a service company. We're really focused. Yes, we're focused on data and modeling, but we're really focused on the user experience side, uh, which is developed by the way here in Tel Aviv. Um, we want our tools to be the simple as we can meaning that if you're using i don't know um a grab a hub or a grab a, a app you you uh, immediately know what to do and how to get your order uh th this is the same concept that we have here on our uh, software and applications we want to 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 be as much as simple uh for the user themselves which means that Yes, we want it with the very limited or without any training at all, but we do understand that when we need to do it and for our enterprise customers and partners, we understand we need to supplement this training, we are doing it. We have people that are very focused on the onboarding side and uh, ensure that our customers are being successful um, through this feedback loop or uh, occasionally meetings. Um, we understand that we can, for our enterprise and partners, customers, we understand that we can't just leave them and go meet them next year. We need to continuously meet with them, verify they, they know and understand and they achieve their goals. And we are, we are committed to their success um, as well because we look on long-term relationships, not just on one-time um, delivery um, that you are submitting and then you might delete the app. No, we are on the opposite. We are believe in long-term relationships and we'll do everything to support. Perfect, thank you, Omer. Glad to hear also it's an easy to use tool, right? The intuitive sort of uh, software. Uh, something like a, an iPhone, which doesn't come with instructions. You just kind of know how to use it off the bat. Exactly. Um, and which is a very important, I mean, if you want a higher uptake, you can't have a complicated product, right? So um, in relation to training and experience uh, and, and ed education, and we, we've got some questions, right? Uh, this was a text in. 
is there a short course on this? And I think they're referring more to Roy's, right? But maybe Omer, right? I wish to have a study opportunity to witness firsthand the Israeli farming technology. So um, that, it's another call for a grant, I think. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I mean, I, you know, if people want to learn more about precision agriculture on understanding weather data, the impact on farming, any thoughts uh, from either of you or both of you uh, on, on where they can learn about this some more? Sure. Uh, so from the Nedafim side, uh, actually, it's it's pretty easy. And, and luckily, the people in Philippines all speak very well English, much better than mine. Uh, so uh, Nedafim have a lot of uh, short courses and videos in our uh, website. So the easiest way is just to click netafim.com <clears throat> or netafim.asia and you can find, or, or of course in YouTube, we, we have a great YouTube uh, channel with many courses, uh, short courses about irrigation and fertigation and everything you can imagine. So this is the easiest way. Uh, it's great for the young people. They can do it easily. And later on, of course, if it's interesting, you're more than welcome to contact us and we can see uh, about more advanced uh, trainings and, and so on. Uh, as I told you, we are coming to the Philippines. Uh, many people, people from the Philippines are coming to Israel. Maybe it's a good opportunity to, to uh, remind you that in October, we're going to have uh, Agritech. It's uh, the biggest ag uh, exhibition, not worldwide, but it's, it's a very big one in, in Israel. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to people to come and see not only Netafim, but all uh, the, the great uh, ag uh, um, community that we have in Israel. So I, I do want to address that question because, again, we are a small company, 200 people. <laughs> the best way to learn about us is through our website and, and see how we use technology and the website to teach others. And the same thing we can take to how we can utilize technology to address a huge scale of requests, let's say, from users or farmers from small company or small amount of people that have knowledge, right? So we can some, somehow compare this question to how we see technology help uh, scalable uh, requests or needs in, in, a, in a huge market. Awesome. And would you like to just uh, mention the name of your website again? Tomorrow.io. <laughs> right. nice. that, that's easy to remember. Thank you. <laughs> hey, All right. Chris, the, the ambassador would like to uh, to speak to this question about training. Sure, ambassador, sure, ambassador please. Thank you very much. Maybe just uh, to say one word, we do give the, an opportunity, and every year we receive about 500 Filipinos, uh, young Filipinos, graduate of colleges, universities for a, uh, actually an 11 program internship, internship program in Israel, working with Israeli farmers. Five days a week they work, one day a week they study, of course, one day a week is rest. This program is implemented through uh, TESDA. Um, we are still trying to get uh, enough people, good people that will come back and then obviously contribute to the agriculture sector in the Philippines while they are learning and understanding what it means to do smart agriculture, commercial agriculture, moving away from subsistence farming. So uh, you're really welcome to, to, um, to apply and basically to test that. And I'll put, uh, we'll add soon in a few days, some more information on the Facebook of the embassy. Um, and secondly, we also offer um, some time um, small grants for alumni of training programs in, in Israel. So this is referring the financial or the grant which was mentioned earlier, and uh, thirdly, we also have we also give some short training programs for experts, sort of not only the internship program but for experts of one or two weeks. And this is again something that we advertise on our face Facebook pages of the embassy as these opportunities um, arrive. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Um... You're very proactive. You already foresaw the questions and are already actually offering all these opportunities. So for those of you in the crowd that uh, were asking questions about training and what have you, uh, the ambassador has just shared uh, three options there, right? Uh, go through TESTA, check out the FB, the embassy of the, uh, the Facebook page of the embassy. There are also these small grants uh, for, for training and even for experts. So um, do take a look at that. Um, great opportunities for us. 
I'm sure now your Facebook page and test are going to be overwhelmed with applications. <laughs> I hope you're ready for that. All right. Um, Roy, there are a lot of people that are saying they want to know where your office is in Davao, uh, Bacolod. Um, I, I think it just shows a general interest to, to visit. Um, I know you've already invited everyone, but if they want to get in touch with you, um, how, how can they do so to coordinate yeah, that? Yeah, so I, I just posted here in the chat uh, Chris' uh, email. Chris is our uh, representative in Philippines. He's leading the company uh, together with Alex. So just feel free to... <laughs> to send him a, a mail and he will be very happy. He should be here in the audience. Uh, maybe he can say a word, but anyhow, uh, I will just post his mail again. Feel free to contact him and we'll be happy to host you. And uh, <clears throat> I'm planning to reach out to you when I'm in Davo. So I'll, I'll, I'll contact my, <laughs> my namesake, Chris, <laughs> to plan that myself. All right. Um, this one, uh, Perhaps you want to take this privately, this one from Philbert. Uh, it's just about having bought your product and there's a clogging issue. Um, perhaps no, that's... Uh, yeah, the short, wanna... answer, the, the short answer is that they probably need to use uh, filters, but of course, uh, we'll take it with uh, Chris and the team and understand what happens there. Perfect. No, thank you. Thank you much, so much, Roy. Uh, from Raimundo Talimo, uh, Talimio. Uh, grow more with less. That is a very catchy phrase. Can this be replicated in the Philippines, knowing fully well that we are an archipelago and there are many opportunities in many of these islands, but there are less support from the Philippine government? Take the case of Occidental Mindoro, which can produce the annual needs of onions, but the place lacks cold storage facilities. How can Netafirm come in in that particular instance? Chris, that you, might be your last. That might be your last question, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think the answer on that is is pretty long. You know, there is an internal joke in Edafim that when we are saying less, so it's less salaries and less benefits. Uh, but uh, no, uh, Edafim is is really trying to do more with less. Uh, but again, as I said a few times today. It's not coming from the skies. It's not coming from God. It's coming from uh, hard work. Uh, we are trying, th this event is part of what we are trying to do in Philippines. Uh, we are in great collaboration with the embassy and, and now with the uh, MDC. And we are very open uh, to collaborate and see how we can donate to the agriculture in Philippines. Uh, we do have, as I said a few times, we do have strong presence in, in Philippines, but we'll be happy, more than happy to do it much more, um, strong and, and efficient <clears throat> so we're open to to hear everything awesome thank you so much roy i i i got my cue that we do need to end this q a already but before we do so perhaps a short 30 second closer from each of you um omer maybe you'd like to begin and then we'll end with roy yeah thank you very much for the opportunity um i think tomorrow.io uh, can bring a lot of um a lot of interesting things to support uh, the Philippines as a country. Uh, feel free to contact me. I, um, I think I've shared my email, and if not, please uh, share afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Omer. And Roy? Yeah, so first of all, I would like to thank you, Christopher, uh, for this great uh, <laughs> Q&A uh, session. Uh, just a short thanks also to the embassy and uh, to NBC. Uh, you all have now an RFM uh, contact details. Uh, feel free. Anything that has to do with agriculture, we are doing, and we'll be happy to keep supporting in that in a in a sorry in Philippines like uh, we're doing for the last thirty years. Thank you so much, Roy. And uh, for all our participants, I know there are a number of comments and questions that came in. I apologize, we weren't able to go through them. Uh, but if there are any burning ones, I'm sure the MBC team can can gather those and 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 see if tomorrow, IO or Netafim can answer some of these uh, and 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 revert back to you with the answers. But with that, let's give a virtual round of applause to our two speakers, panelists, uh, Omer and Roy. Thank you again, and uh, back to Trisha for the next part of our program. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, <clears throat> Trisha had to step away unexpectedly, so I'll I'll take over uh, at this point. Uh, Trisha was, of course, the one who, who worked with the embassy on, on this project, and I'm, I'm sure she's disappointed that she won't see the ending of this, but as you know, there's two more sessions and she'll be there. So 
Thank you very much, Chris, and everyone, of course. Uh, Chris, thanks for the great moderation. And gentlemen, thanks very much for the great discussion. We do have to wrap up, but uh, we don't want to leave any, uh, anyone hanging. We'll be sure to forward any unanswered questions to our speakers. In fact, I've asked my team to, to put the questions together because I want to show them to, to my board as well uh, so that they can get back to you with a response. Or you may also join the, coming, the upcoming online networking session organized by the Embassy of Israel, on Israel of Israel on Feb 20, and we can continue the conversation there. Before every, anything else, we'd like to request everyone to send us feedback on today's session via the QR code that we're flashing on your screen now. Some of you will see it on your, on your chat box. We'd really appreciate that feedback uh, so we know how we can do this better in the future. Um, as you do that, uh, we'd like to hear from the Israel Embassy's economic counselor, Tomer Havy. Tomer has been a proactive link between the Philippine and Israel business since he started in his post at the height of the pandemic back in 2020. Thanks to his and his team's efforts, more bilateral opportunities for trade and job creation between the two countries uh, are strengthened further. With that, I'd like to call on Tomer for brief closing remarks and more details on the networking session. Tomer. Thank you, Coco, for this uh, very nice introduction. And generally, I'm very happy to be here uh, today. Uh, I would like to start by thanking uh, Ambassador Ilan Flus for initiating this important uh, event together with the uh, Makati Business Club. Uh, to you for your uh, part of this uh, amazing event, facilitating this amazing event with all the audience that we have here uh, today, as well as to Trisha and uh, board members of uh, MBC. Uh, of course, also to our uh, speakers from Tomorrow IO and Netafim, uh, Mr. Omar Sela, Mr. Roy Yonai and to our wonderful moderator that I learned a lot from you, Christopher. So thank you for, for a really interesting uh, session. Um, so yeah, I would like to congratulate everyone for a very successful event and a lively discussion. And I personally learned a lot and uh, from the open discussion, from the comments and from the audience. Indeed, Israel is a global leader in agriculture. And I hope that today's session helped you help to emphasize that as well as to uh, share what Israel has to offer to the world and to the Philippines in terms of agricultural technologies. Technologies that were presented today by Netafim and Tomorrow IO can help transform the agriculture landscape of the Philippines and tackle uh, food security challenges. And that is, of course, can be done with the right setting and the support from the Philippine side. Um, agriculture is one of the top priority areas that we're focused here uh, in the Embassy of Israel and the economic mission of Israel, Philippines, and also to the, the advancements and the technologies from the Israeli side. We invest a lot of efforts in uh, doing activities like is this one and also uh, bringing on delegations and uh, also assisting in uh, some of the events that we have in Israel. Uh, Roy mentioned that we will have a, a big event next year in Israel, which is called Agritech. Agri uh, when the final date will be uh, closed, we'll be happy to share it with the uh, participants in agriculture events in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with regard to today's session, uh, we invite you to generally be in touch with, uh, with me and my team uh, to further ex explore opportunity uh, opportunities in the agriculture technologies, Miss Ariane Blanche from my team is right here with us in this uh, webinar. She's the sector lead for agriculture and water technologies and will be happy to assist you. Um, finally, also to invite you to participate uh, and join the B2B uh, activity uh, with the Israeli companies. So we dedicated, allocated the whole session where you can meet the two companies presented here and also the companies that will present in the next, uh, in the next uh, sessions on the other uh, topics. With that, I would like to thank you all again. Maraming salamat sa lahat. Toda raba to all our speakers from Israel. Thank you. Tomer, thank you very much. Um, that wraps up today's session. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, Chris, Omer, Roy, uh, Tomer, uh, everyone else. And of course, uh, Ambassador. Ambassador, uh, thank you very much for this initiative. You started this, uh, you started talking with us last year. Very glad that we're, we finally kicked it off. Uh, great thanks to you for for uh, for putting us on this path. Ambassador, before I finally close, do you have, would you like to say a few words? I think uh, Tom uh, said it all, just to say again, thank you to you, Coco. Yes, we met uh, just about less than a year ago. 
but I'm happy that we're able to, to do it. And we have two more sessions plus the B2B. And just to say that for me, the important outcome of this event is to have practical collaborations as much as possible focusing on private sector. But obviously we are here to support as government in the ways that I elaborated before. And I'm extremely grateful and very optimistic that we'll see uh, now uh, sort of new collaborations and new partnerships between Israel and the Philippines. Thank you. Ambassador, thank you very much. We'd like to thank all of you and invite everyone to join the second session of the Philippines Israel Tech and Innovation Series on Feb 2, and that will tackle climate change. More details will, be, will follow. You can follow that on our, on our website and our social media. With that, thank you all. Uh, thank you to everyone, and we hope to see you at the next session. Good afternoon, everyone. Ambassador, thank you very much. Tomer, thank you. Chris, thank you. Chris, I'm really uh, impressed, really. Uh, the way you moderate this discussion, I salute you. Thank you, thank you. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was great. Good, so thank I hope you, to see you all and we'll, we'll meet each other in two weeks' time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks.